Well, good morning. It's day four of my epic cross the bob trip, and today is maybe the epic most day of all, because today's the day I get to find out whether I can actually discover a path up on top of the wall. There's a lot that I don't know about that. I've stood in Larch Hill Pass before and spied that and tried to figure out a route and I wasn't able to do it. But I have an inside scoop this time, a little hint about how to get up there. So I'm hoping I can find the right spot and manage that. But first I've got, I think it's 13 miles and 3,000 feet of elevation gain climbing up to the Spotted Bear River into Spotted Bear Pass and then on up into Larch Hill Pass. And that's the moment of truth. All right, well, I was up early at five, too early, too dark to film. Just now the sun's coming up and I'll be packed up and ready to go by seven. Hopefully, good start on the day. Well, not hopefully, it is a good start on the day. Hopefully it's enough to get me where I need to go. All right, let's go. Just getting started on the trail and there's a little bit of a sprinkle going on. It's weird, this has happened, I think, every morning and it hasn't amounted to much. I hope this doesn't either, but uh, it's almost like it's so humid that it has to <laughs> squeeze a few drops out of the air in the morning. Appreciate that it's held off every day until I was all packed up and ready to go. Starting to see the destination here as the rain comes down. My light rain developed into something a little more serious so I'm ducking it out for a few minutes in the shade of a tree. <laughs> so it's raining heavy at times and I've seen a couple of fresh bear scats, so there's a grizzly around here somewhere. And there's thunder and lightning in this storm too. Off to a good start. Haven't even been on the trail for an hour. Just sitting here soaking up this glorious sunshine. The rain started a little before 8 and it lasted until after 11 o'clock and I was sitting it out in a tree well for about a half an hour but I kind of have a rule that if it goes on longer than that it's not going to be some summer squall that just passes over. I did wait out the worst of the thunder and lightning but and I decided I had to get going. So I uh, pressed forward and it got heavy at times and the underbrush got thoroughly soaked and so did I. I couldn't have been more wet if I had walked straight into a lake with all my clothes on. Which brings me to another topic and that is my raincoat socks. Man, I've had it for a while and I've been caught out couple other times but I always made generous excuses for it wetting through and uh, there was no excuse today it just in an hour it wetted through it was completely useless which is why I got so soaked inside and really was kind of concerned about possibility of hypothermia I just kept thinking I have to keep moving in order to keep my internal heater going and I was starting to plan on getting to my lake and setting up camp just to dive into the sleeping quilt and try to warm up. But 
then it passed and between not being able to do any take any pictures because I didn't want to risk the camera getting wet and I certainly didn't feel like stopping and taking my usual five to ten minute break every hour I made pretty good time getting up here <laughs> I think I shaved almost an hour off the time I really hauled ass when I wasn't stopping for photography or breaks so feeling pretty good just can't tell you how great that sunshine feels drying me out so now I've got about I believe it's a little over a mile to my lake and I'll get water there and then about two and a half miles to Larch Hill Pass and that's when things really get epic this was a little more epic than I planned on I've been here before so I didn't expect it to be the very top I know that you still have to climb to get up to my lake and even more to Larch Hill Pass but the last time I was here in 2014 it just had burned and it was really barren black everywhere so it's really kind of neat to see the lush green that's come back just in six years that's the Rock Creek drainage which eventually leads down to Gates Park made it to my lake and it's 115 I forgot to mention that there was about 800 feet of elevation gain between Spotted Bear Pass and this lake so that took a little extra time this was one of the spots that I wanted to connect the dots in designing this trip I was here in 2014 and it was so freezing cold I only stayed for about five minutes and then left and I wanted to come back and spend the night but those plans have changed now that I think I can get up on the wall beautiful place though well I've taken some time to wring out my socks and fill every water container that I have and I certainly use the aqua tabs to treat this water because if there's any dirty water anywhere on this trip it would be here because there's it's so high traffic area and lots of stock come and uh, people with stock come and spend the night here so uh, yeah there's uh, not a good chance that this isn't contaminated water so I actually brought an extra two liter container that I'll show you later how I use that in my pillow but for now I'm actually using it for water because I don't know what I'll be able to find up top on top of the wall so I want to be prepared in case I don't find any that adds a little bit of weight but I'd be happy I'm happy for the security of it now I just need to hike up over a little ridge and then I'll be able to see the wall and hopefully find the way to get to the top uh, getting pretty nervous let's go by the way I am on the CDT again in case you didn't notice from Spotted Bear Pass up to just where the trail takes off to go up to Larch Hill Pass and that's looking down on my lake by the way if you're keeping track the Dolly Varden trail was a disappointment and the Pentagon Pass Trail sucked. It was really difficult. But this Spotted Bear Trail coming up the pass here really was wonderful. It's in fantastic shape despite coming up in the rain. And there was a fair amount of bushes growing over that helped to get me very wet. Uh, although those bushes were huckleberries, ripe huckleberries going on for miles and that led to the only downside really which was a whole lot of bear scat in fact I think there was probably more bear scat on this trail of any trail I've seen outside of Glacier Park thankfully I didn't run into any but there was lots of good views and just love that Spotted Bear River so this was a great place. I'd definitely come back and do this again. And that is the Chinese Wall. 
at least the Montana version of it. And this is just the northern section of the southern <laughs> part of the wall. So you get the idea. By an amazing coincidence, just when I got to the place to climb up, there was a guy climbing up. Which helped just to know that it's possible. Maybe when he's coming down, I'll ask him the right route. He's not carrying a backpack though. When you get to the top of that draw, that isn't the end. Because then there's a knob right there that you have to contour around the back side. So far there's a nice social trail leading the way. Hope it continues. Well I stayed on the social trail, which brought me around behind the wall and down a bit. Which is probably okay because I know that if I was up on the very edge, I would only go about a half a mile or so before hitting that wall and having to contour all the way down to there. Working my way down there. As with everything in the high country, everything is bigger than it looks. Once you get over closer to that cliff, it's a lot rougher country than you might have expected. That's where I started from about half an hour ago. Well, I've just managed to round the edge. I believe that's it there. Tiny little thing. And I found the social trail again, of course, because this is where the traffic would go. And now I'm starting to climb all the way back up which I think is a thousand feet. Well, I gotta tell you, it's just been super, super hard to get back up to the edge, this thousand feet was a lot easier to go down than back up. And it's kind of confusing too with the trees up at the top. It's hard to figure out exactly where to go. I thought that was going to be a no-brainer, but it's taken me some time to figure it out. It's almost 5.30 now, so a little concerned about where I'm going to end up tonight. I think maybe I found a route here through the trees. I think I might almost be there. Oh, wow. Whew. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Wow. That's right, that's me dangling my sore feet off the Chinese wall.
walking along the top of the wall isn't as straightforward as you might think. There's so many dips and bends in the actual wall, it's not a straight line and you have to drop down a little bit. On Google Earth, this country behind the Chinese wall it looks just bare and open and you would think you could really make good time, but it's so rocky, so it's actually pretty slow going. Well, there's Cliff Mountain, which is the next big obstacle. Not quite sure how I'm going to get around that. Probably won't tonight. Hoping to find a place I can shack up down in there somewhere. Well, it's 7.15 and I think it's about time I made camp. Somewhere, maybe in that depression, there's no water, but I think I brought enough to be okay. Might look like a fantastic campsite just down from the edge of the wall. But in fact, it's surrounded by bear grass. And I just managed to find a little bit of a spot that was flat-ish in between clumps of bear grass. And it's sloping downhill a little. Hope I don't migrate too bad. But there's a pretty decent view, I must say. Well, I am just dead beat. This is one of those nights that I would be happy to just go to bed without eating anything. I just want to get in bed so bad and get to sleep. I'm not going to do that though because I've made that mistake before and ended up freezing. So I'm making up some beef stroganoff and it's one of those peak refuel half of the meal which is perfect because it only takes three ounces uh, to rehydrate it and I really need to conserve water because I only have a little bit, only about two quarts for tonight and for tomorrow. I did carry extra water up here. Let's see if I can show you that. <clears throat> In this platypus holder and I was going to show off to you that usually I use this down pillow from Goose Feet Gear and it's got a little sleeve in the back of it that I just put the platypus in that sleeve and blow it up and then that gives me an inflated pillow. So it's usually a pretty good two for one but like I said I've never used it before until today and sure needed it today. So that was uh, pretty epic day like I keep saying. Uh, I believe the mileage is hard to say because of scrambling around on the top of the mountain. It was 13 to Larch Hill Pass and so probably 17 or 18 to where I am now. Uh, although the elevation gain is the real story that's like 4,500 feet which is just crazy. But I'm feeling pretty good. I think that uh, good night's sleep and everything will look a little brighter tomorrow. I do know I have some work cut out for me because this thing I've been showing you and calling Cliff Mountain isn't Cliff Mountain. It's just an unnamed feature that's in my way. And I've been contouring down low in order to get up on it, but I think I have to do just the opposite. I have to go to the top of it and get past the front of it the east side so that'll be some work tomorrow and also got to work my way around in front of Sphinx Peak and over to Haystack Mountain and from there it's all downhill 
and I can't wait. So today I started just about here at my camp on the Spotted Bear River and climbed up the Spotted Bear Pass through that nasty thunderstorm and rain and it was raining all the way up until I hit the pass and part of it actually the sun came out but this is an east facing slope and so I could see the sun but it wasn't hitting me. Spotted Bear kept climbing up to my lake where I refilled with water and then climbed on up and over here to just short of Larch Hill Pass and the chute I climbed is right there and, and then when I got on top this knob was in the way so I dropped down behind that and there's a cliff right here so I just kept going down to about here about a thousand feet down to cross that and then climb 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 a thousand feet back up to the edge of the wall and then along the wall until this knob so I dropped down behind that and that's where I got kind of disoriented and in my dropping down I mistook this formation here for Salt Mountain and this actually sorry I mistook that for Cliff Mountain I thought I was much farther along uh, and so I ended up camping down probably around here and uh, like I said I'm glad I did camp there because if I had kept going I would have gone down here and climbed up on top of that and then been nowhere with a whole lot of work so I ended up camping here all right well thanks for watching and tune in for tomorrow and see how that the rest of the wall goes take care night get along little doggy get along with me Ooh, it's time you face the fact that you can't remember the in-between